does it, Joe? All set, Mr. Douglas. When do you figure on getting to California? Well, now, we thought we'd get there on Sunday. Uh, how about you? Well, your furniture ought to be there about the same time you are. Well, I'll be fine. You think the house is going to miss us? Sure, it'll miss us. The minute we get out of sight, it's going to break right down and start to cry out of all the faucets. <laughs> the neighbors will sell tickets to see the crying house. <laughs> I like to think the house is going to miss us, Charlie. Look, are we going to California or are we going to stand here waving bye-bye to a pile of lumber? No, well, uh, Charlie's right, fellas. Let's, uh... Let's all pile in. Come on, let's go. Come on, move it. <clears throat> Boy, Dad. Now, Chip, when they transferred me to California, you fellas all thought it was a great idea, so... Uh, well, there's no turning back now. I know. Hey, you crying, Ernie? Oh, heck no. The tramp just breathed on my glasses and they steamed up. You got a key? Sure have. Tell you right in my head. Hey, we got some mail already. Ah, looks like a telegram. Let's see. That's well, uh, from the moving company. It says the truck is still on the road, but ought to arrive here sometime this afternoon. Uh, well, that's fine. Well, everybody enter the new house. <laughs> hey, come on. Run. Go ahead, Rob. Well, how about this? Huh? Boy, it's really big. Yeah. Oh, I think it just looks big, Rob, because it hasn't any furniture in it yet. Hey, Dad, where are our rooms? Well, uh, you know, it's about the same as the old house. Charlie's room is off the kitchen there, and uh, we're all upstairs. Let's go take a look. Uh, yeah. Well, Charlie, I hope we made a good move. Uh, we didn't move to Siberia. This is California, the land of milk and money. Uh, milk and honey, Charlie. Well, I'm too old for the honeys. I'll take the money. <laughs> hey, there's a trap door upstairs, but if you throw junk in, it shows up downstairs. That's a laundry chute, Ernie. It's big enough for me to get into. Could I? No. I don't want anybody sliding down that laundry chute. Okay. Get your hip out of there, Chip. Dan says no. <laughs> hey, Dad, this is really great. Really gonna be great. You know, I think Uncle Charlie was right. You kind of have to forget Brian Park and we'll make a whole new thing. Hey, I don't want to scare anybody or anything, but Ernie's turning kind of purple. Turning purple? Yeah, he got his head stuck in one of those windows where you turn the handle, and the handle fell off. <laughs> well, what are you fellas planning on doing today after you finish Uncle Charlie finish the hey. Is it okay if me and Chip... Uh, uh, what was that? Oh, is it okay if Chip and I go look for movie stars? We won't pester him for autographs or anything. We won't just stare at him. What are you planning to do today, Rob? Oh, I, I thought I'd go down to the campus and just look around. Look around for what? As if I didn't know. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, you're going to have to readjust your thinking on me. Well, I like girls, sure, but they aren't the be-all and end-all of life. I just want to meet a few new friends. Then start on the folks next door. I saw a few of them stirring around this morning. Any girls? <laughs> I'll be able to tell you more after they hang out their washing. <laughs> you think we ought to go over there and say hello, Dad? Go oh, not for a while, Chip. Besides, I think it's the custom uh, for the old established people in the neighborhood to welcome the new ones that come in and... Uh, so they'll probably be around in a day or two. Be sure you don't go over there and pester them. Oh, we run down to the sea in ships. Run down. Good morning. Good morning. Nice day. Yes, it is. 
I'm sorry, that was an accident. Okay, you guys, just get the principal them grades I put in the envelopes. And Chip, you make sure that he's in the schoolyard before you go to that high school of yours. Okay, Uncle Charlie. Don't get in any fights. And if you do, don't take anything from anybody. Now, use good English and don't tell a bunch of lies. Well, I think that's about all. Oh, wait, here's your, your lunches. I put a couple of first day cookies in there. Bye. All right. See you, Uncle Charlie. You all set for that college of yours? Yeah, I sure hope it's better than the rest of California. See you, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> We just came out from the east yesterday. Twelve fifteen. <laughs> Three seventy-three. The weather out here is really something. Is it like this all the time? Seventy-seven. Four twenty-five. Five fifty. Three fifty-five. That'll be forty-two fifty. Here. Yeah. And thanks for the nice, friendly little chat. Your stamps. Next, please. I'll send all my friends here for courteous personal attention. <laughs> And I'll remember you in my will, right after my worst enemy. And I got further news for you. I don't have to trade this place at any time from now on. Go ahead. When you get in the crosswalk, you're supposed to cross. And get splattered all over the pavement by jokers like you. Not on your tin hat. Will you move, knothead? I haven't got all day. <laughs> Not a soul. The lady dragon at the market, the people next door, nobody so much as opened up their trap to say hello. Yeah, and that girl over there, she just stared when I said hi. And so did her brother, whoever he is. And we didn't see one movie star. No, I wouldn't say the people next door are exactly friendly. But this is a big city, and I suppose people are a little more standoffish until they get to know you. Well, I'm not enchanted with California so far. If that's the way they want it, then don't any of you guys break down and talk to them first. Oh, now, Rob, that's a little childish, don't you think? Well, they don't call things like that childish anymore, Dad. It's called rejection compensation. <laughs> I don't care what you call it. Don't any of you guys talk to them crumbs next door. Charlie. Well, I'm sorry. Don't any of you guys talk to those crumbs next door. <laughs> Steve, I'm gonna hit the sack. I've been knocking my brains out trying to make this joint into a house. Steve, you asleep? No, 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 Charlie. I was just uh, resting my eyes. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Steve, I know this has been kind of a rotten day for all of us, but that's the way it always is in the Newport. But tomorrow, the boys will be meeting new friends in their new school, and everything will be great. I know. Sure. No point mooning all over the joint. So put Bryant Park and that old house out of your mind. Right, Charlie. Good night. And uh, don't forget, Ernie, when things get rough, why, you always have a friend you can pray to. Oh, I already did that. We oh, did. I pray for you to come in here. Well, you know, Ernie, that's the nicest compliment I ever had. Why don't you lie down? I'll go to sleep, right? Yes, sir. Good night. Would it be baby if I asked you to stay in here for a while? I mean, just while I go to sleep. No, it wouldn't be baby at all, Ernie. I'm right here. 
the night ahead. Something wrong, Dad? No, no, nothing's wrong, Chip. It's just that, uh, well, I thought we ought to have a little talk. What about? Well, uh, about, uh, about life. About living, actually. The uh, cycle of life, I believe they call it. Well, heck, I know all about that. You do? Yeah. After the egg hatches, it's a polywalk. And pretty soon, some legs grow out, and then the tail falls off, and it's a frog. Yes, that's right, Jeff. <laughs> but I'm afraid there's a little more to uh, life than that. Yeah, but we don't get to study about jellyfish and sharks till next semester. <laughs> Robbie, why don't you uh, do Peggy a favor, like you do for an old friend? That'd be little enough to sacrifice when you consider all the hours she's invested in your engine. What's little enough? What did you ask her for a date? A date? <laughs> all for her, take her to a movie, and maybe after the movie, treat her to a malt and a hamburger, and, and when you take her to her door to cap off the whole evening, maybe uh, kiss her goodnight. Kiss her goodnight? <laughs> Dad! If this ever got her on, I'd never be able to show my face at school again. Life's a gamble, Rob. That's a risk you'll have to take. Yeah, but maybe she won't want to. You don't know, Pig. She just might haul off and belt me one. Well, you still got one good eye left. <laughs> Boy, if she ever snitches on me. Oh, come on, Rob. Better hold a piece of ice on that eye while you eat, huh? A day at a time, Rob. Um, that's the way we all live. A day at a time. Dad, are you awake? Dad, you asleep? Well, hi, Ernie. Uh, what are you doing out of bed? Every time I think I'm going to sleep, I keep thinking about the house and Bly Park. Oh. Is there something wrong with my brain or something? No, I don't think so, Ernie. Come on, sit down. I guess uh, we've all been doing a little of that, Ernie. How come we thought it was going to be so great out here, and it turned out to be so terrible? Maybe we expected too much. You know, there's a saying, anticipation is better than participation. Yeah. It's like when you think you're going to do great in class, and the teacher shoots you down. Well, something like that, yeah. Dad? Hmm? If I tell you something, will you be sure not to tell Chip or Robbie? It's a deal. Well, when I was thinking about the house, in Bryant Park, my friends, upstairs just now. I kind of cried a little bit. Well, shall I tell you something, Ern? I wasn't far from it myself a minute ago. Really? Yeah. Well, do you think maybe you can do a little better in the sleep department now? Heck yeah, yeah. Come on, I'll go for it. Brown binder doesn't live here. How do I know the number? We just moved in. You getting smart with me, Jack? Look, I can't see the number on the phone. I haven't got my glasses on. And I'm not going to walk clean across the kitchen to get him to do a favor for a Californian. I don't care if you're from Tallahassee. You sound like a Californian. Hi, Uncle Charles. How was school? Don't answer that. I can tell by the look on your face. They're as friendly around here as a cup of hemlock. Boy, in every class, I had to get up and tell my name and then describe where I came from. Boy, what a day. Those kids in next door didn't say a word. And in every class, I had to get up and tell my name and talk about where I came from. Yeah, and I already got homework. Why? Come to California and no one talks to you. You don't see any movie stars. And you don't even get to stick your feet in those footprints at the Chinese theater. And they give you homework. I wonder what old Cooney Weatherman is doing down at the meat market back home. Boy, I never thought I'd miss my gym locker at Bryant High. You know, I don't think it's good for a kid my age to have their dreams shatter like this. <laughs> Uh, 
Say that again. Say what again? The hive. Hi. You know something? That's the first friendly word anybody said to me since we moved to California. Well, then I'm glad I was the one to say it. Well, uh, looks like we're going to be neighbors. May I borrow a cup of sugar? If you promise to return it along with the eggs you borrowed last week. Well, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, another nice day. Yes, it is. Again. Uh, by the way, my name is Steve Douglas. Oh, I'm Jan Deering. Well, how do you do? I thought that as long as we're neighbors, we ought to get to know each other. I suppose you've seen my three boys. Oh, yes, I have. And uh, the older man's nodded to us a couple of times. Oh, he's the uh, boy's Uncle Charlie. You know, uh, he really doesn't like California. Oh, has he uh, just joined you? Oh, no. No, we all came out together. We just moved in day before yesterday. I guess we didn't see you moving in because, well, that's the day we all went to the beach. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Douglas, this is a real comedy of errors. Well, how do you mean? Well, we've been sitting around sort of waiting for you old-time Californians to welcome us. To, to welcome you? You see, we only moved in the day before you did. We're from Michigan. No. Yeah. Well. Well. Hey, Dad, look what I found at school. We owe her some eggs. Oh? Katie, this is my dad, Dad Katie Miller. Hello, Katie. How do you do? She's my locker neighbor. We don't really owe her any eggs. She was actually born here. Really? Well, uh, Rob and Katie, this is Mrs. Deering, our neighbor. Hi. Oh. Hello there. Hi. Uh, Katie. As the only genuine uh, Californian we've met so far, uh, what would you say is the best way for two neighbor families to get to know each other better? You're not a true transplanted Californian, so you have broken bread and burned meat together at a barbecue. <laughs> at a barbecue. We'll... Are the hamburgers supposed to be in fire like that, Mr. O'Casey? Yeah, Gordon. You and Ernie run in the house and get me some wax paper. Hey, Gordon. He doesn't want any wax paper. He just wants us to get out of here. And how come we're going for the wax paper? Because he doesn't like it if kids like us figure out why he says things. <laughs> hey, Uncle Charlie, the, the hamburgers are on fire. Yeah. You two do me a favor. Go on in the house and find me some wax paper, will you? <laughs> hey, Uncle Charlie. Go in the house and find me some wax paper. <laughs> Well, those hamburgers smell good, Uncle Charlie. Aren't you going to say how they're on fire? Well, you're just searing in the juices, aren't you? Right. I'd like mine a little on the rare side, if you don't mind, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I forgot what we're looking for. Wax paper. Wax paper? <laughs> Your Uncle Charlie sent us all in here to get rid of us. I guess so. Come on, you guys. We might as well get out there and get our hamburgers. Boy, Uncle Charlie really gets... Your Uncle Charlie what? Forget about Uncle Charlie. Here they are. They look just wonderful. Jerry, may I help with the coffee? Oh, they'd be just great. Thank you. You're going to have to move that over. Say, Dad, may I speak to you a minute? Yeah, sure. Dad, you went with a lot of girls in your time, right? Well, it wasn't exactly an army, Rob, but I went with a few girls, yeah. Well, how did you know when the time came to... I mean, what made you propose to our mother? Well, you know, it's a funny thing. I kept seeing her in an apron and in a house. And somehow I just knew it was our house. An apron, huh? Are you sure it wasn't a wedding dress? No, no. no it was one of those half aprons, you know, and it had a big red rose for a pocket. Dad, take a look at Katie now and just tell me what you see. Oh, I see a very pretty girl helping with the coffee. Yeah, I, I guess you would. Why? Uh, what do you see? 
Oh, nothing. You know, Dad, uh, I'm beginning to understand what they see in California. <laughs> on getting to California. Well, now we thought we'd get there on Sunday. Uh, how about you? Well, your furniture ought to be there about the same time you are. Well, I'll be fine. You think the house is going to miss us? Sure, it'll miss us. The minute we get out of sight, it's going to break right down and start to cry out of all the fossils. <laughs> the neighbors will sell tickets to see the crying house. <laughs> I like to think the house is going to miss us, Charlie. Look, are we going to California or are we going to stand here waving bye-bye to a pile of lumber? No, well, uh, Charlie's right, fellas. Let's, uh... Let's all pile in. Come on. Let's go. Come on, move it. <clears throat> Boy, Dad. Now, Chip, when they transferred me to California, you fellas all thought it was a great idea, so... Uh, well, there's no turning back now. I know. Hey, you crying, Ernie? Heck no. The tramp just breathed on my glasses and they steamed up. You got a key? Sure have, Charlie, right in my hand. Hey, we got some mail already. Ah, looks like a telegram. Let's see. Oh, it's uh, from the moving company. It says the truck is still on the road, but ought to arrive here sometime this afternoon. Well, that's fine. Well, everybody into the new house. <laughs> hey, come on. Go ahead, Rob. Well, how about this? Huh? Boy, it's really big. Yeah. Oh, I think it doesn't look big, Rob, because it hasn't any furniture in it yet. Hey, Dad, where are our rooms? Well, uh, you know, it's about the same as the old house. Charlie's room is off the kitchen there, and uh, we're all upstairs. Let's go take a look. Uh, yeah. Well, Charlie, I hope you made a good move. Uh, we didn't move to Siberia. This is California, the land of milk and money. Uh, milk and honey, Charlie. Well, I'm too old for the honeys. I'll take the money. <laughs> hey, there's a trap door upstairs, but if you throw junk in, it shows up downstairs. That's a laundry chute, Ernie. It's big enough for me to get into. Could I? No. I don't want anybody sliding down that laundry chute. Okay. Get your hand out of there, Chip. Dan says no. <laughs> hey, Dad, this is really great. Really going to be great. You know, I think Uncle Charlie was right. You kind of have to forget Brian Park and we'll make a whole new thing. Hey, 
I don't want to scare anybody or anything, but Ernie's turning kind of purple. Turning purple? Yeah, he got his head stuck in one of those windows where you turn the handle, and the handle fell off. <laughs> What are you fellas planning on doing today after you finish up with Charlie? Finish up. Hey. Is it okay if me and Chip. Uh, uh, what was that? Oh. Is it okay if Chip and I go look for movie stars? We won't pester them for autographs or anything. We'll just stare at them. What are you planning to do today, Rob? Oh, I, I thought I'd go down to the campus and just look around. Look around for what? As if I didn't know. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, you're going to have to readjust your thinking on me. Well, I like girls, sure, but they aren't the be all and end all of life. I just want to meet a few new friends. Then stand on the folks next door. I saw a few of them stirring around this morning. Any girls? <laughs> I'll be able to tell you more after they hang out their washing. <laughs> you think we ought to go over there and say hello, Dad? Go out for a while, Chip. Besides, I think it's the custom uh, for the old established people in the neighborhood to welcome the new ones that come in, and uh, so they'll probably be around in a day or two. Be sure you don't go over there and pester them. Oh, we run down to the sea in ships. Run down. Nice day. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was an accident. you guys just get the principal them grades I put in the envelopes and chip you make sure that he's in the schoolyard before you go to that high school of yours okay uncle Charlie don't get in any fights and if you do don't take anything from anybody now use good English and don't tell a bunch of lies well I think that's about all oh wait here's your your lunches I put a couple of first day cookies in there bye all right. See you, uncle Charlie. you all set for that college of yours yeah, I sure hope it's better than the rest of California. See you, Uncle Charlie. We just came out from the east yesterday. 12, 15. 373. The weather out here is really something. Is it like this all the time? 77. Four, twenty-five, five, fifteen, three, fifty-five. That'll be forty-two, fifteen. Here. And thanks for the nice, friendly little chat. Your stamps. Next, please. I'll send all my friends here for courteous personal attention. And I'll remember you in my will, right after my worst enemy. And I got further news for you. I don't have to trade this place at any time from now on. Go ahead. When you get in the crosswalk, you're supposed to cross. And get splattered all over the pavement by jokers like you? Not on your tin hat. Will you move, not head? I haven't got all day. <laughs> Go on and hang your California so and so. <laughs> not a soul. The lady dragon at the market, the people next door, nobody so much as opened up their trap to say hello. Yeah, and that girl over there, she just stared when I said hi. And so did her brother, whoever he is. And we didn't see one movie star. No, I wouldn't say the people next door are exactly friendly. But this is a big city, and I suppose people are a little more standoffish until they get to know you. Well, I'm not enchanted with California so far. If that's the way they want it, then don't any of you guys break down and talk to them first. Oh, now, Rob, that's a little childish, don't you think? Well, they don't call things like that childish anymore, Dad. It's called rejection compensation. <laughs> I don't care what you call it. Don't any of you guys talk to them crumbs next door. Charlie. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't any of you guys talk to those crumbs next door. <laughs> Steve, I'm 
gonna hit the sack. I've been knocking my brains out trying to make this joint into a house. Steve, you asleep? No, 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 Charlie. I was just uh, resting my eyes. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Steve, I know this has been kind of a rotten day for all of us, but that's the way it always is in the Newport. But tomorrow, the boys will be meeting new friends in their new school, and everything will be great. I know. Sure. No point mooning all over the joint. So put Bryant Park and that old house out of your mind. Right, Charlie. Good night. And uh, don't forget, Ernie, when things get rough, why, you always have a friend you can pray to. Oh, I already did that. We did. I prayed for you to come in here. Well, you know, Ernie, that's the nicest compliment I ever had. Why don't you lie down? I'm going to sleep, all right? Yes, sir. Would it be baby if I asked you to stay in here for a while? I mean, just while I go to sleep. No, it wouldn't be baby at all, Ernie. I'm right here. Good night, Ernie. Something wrong, Dad? No, no, nothing's wrong, Chip. It's just that, uh... Well, I thought we ought to have a little talk. What about? Well, uh... About, uh, about life. About living, actually. The uh, cycle of life, I believe they call it. Well, heck, I know all about that. You do? Yeah. After the egg hatches, it's a polywalk. And pretty soon, some legs grow out, and then the tail falls off, and it's a frog. Yes, that's right, Jeff. <laughs> but I'm afraid there's a little more to uh, life than that. Yeah, but we don't get to study about jellyfish and sharks till next semester. <laughs> Robbie, why don't you uh, do Peggy a favor, like you do for an old friend? It'd be little enough to sacrifice when you consider all the hours she's invested in your engine. What's little enough? What did you ask her for a date? A date? All for her. Take her to a movie, and maybe after the movie, treat her to a malt and a hamburger, and, and when you take her to her door to cap off the whole evening, maybe uh, kiss her goodnight. Kiss her goodnight? <laughs> If this ever got around, I'd never be able to show my face at school again. <laughs> Life's a gamble, Rob. That's a risk you'll have to take. Yeah, but maybe she won't want to. You don't know, Pig. She just might haul off and belt me one. Well, uh, you still got one good eye left. <laughs> Boy, if she ever snitches on me. Uh, come on, Rob. You better hold a piece of ice on that eye while you eat, huh? A day at a time, Rob. That's the way we all live. A day at a time. Dad, are you awake? Dad, you asleep? Well, hi, Ernie. What are you doing out of bed? Every time I think I'm going to sleep, I keep thinking about the house and Bryant Park. Oh. Is there something wrong with my brain or something? No, I don't think so, Ernie. Come on, sit down. I guess uh, we've all been doing a little of that, Ernie. How come we thought it was going to be so great out here, and it turned out to be so terrible? Maybe we expected too much. You know, there's a saying, anticipation is better than participation. Yeah. It's like when you think you're going to do great in class, and the teacher shoots you down. Well, something like that, yeah. Dad? Hmm? If I tell you something, will you be sure not to tell Chip or Robbie? It's a deal. Well, when I was thinking about the house, and Brian Park, and my friends, upstairs just now. I kind of cried a little bit. Well, shall I tell you something, Ern? I wasn't far from it myself a minute ago. Really? Yeah. 
Well, do you think maybe you can uh, do a little better in the sleep department now? Heck yeah, dear. Come on, I'll go for it. Now, Walter Brownbinder doesn't live here. How do I know the number? We just moved in. You getting smart with me, Jack? Look, I can't see the number on the phone. I haven't got my glasses on. And I'm not going to walk clean across the kitchen to get them to do a favor for a Californian. I don't care if you're from Tallahassee. You sound like a Californian. Hi, Uncle Charles. How is school? Don't answer that. I can tell by the look on your face. They're as friendly around here as a cup of hemlock. Boy, in every class, I had to get up and tell my name and then describe where I came from. Boy, what a day. Those kids next door didn't say a word. And in every class, I had to get up and tell my name and talk about where I came from. Yeah, and I already got homework. Boy, you come to California and no one talks to you. You don't see any movie stars. And you don't even get to stick your feet in those footprints at the Chinese theater. And they give you homework. I wonder what old Tooney Weatherman is doing down at the meat market back home. Boy, I never thought I'd miss my gym locker, Brian High. You know, I don't think it's good for a kid my age to have their dreams shattered like this. <laughs> Say that again. Say what again? Hi. Hi. You know something? That's the first friendly word anybody said to me since we moved to California. Well, then I'm glad I was the one to say it. Well, uh, looks like we're going to be neighbors. May I borrow a cup of sugar? If you promise to return it along with the eggs you borrowed last week. Well, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, another nice day. Yes, it is. Again. Uh, by the way, my name is Steve Douglas. Oh, I'm Jan Deering. Well, how do you do? I thought that as long as we're neighbors, we ought to get to know each other. I suppose you've seen my three boys. Oh, yes, I have. And uh, the older man's nodded to us a couple of times. Oh, he's the uh, boy's Uncle Charlie. You know, uh, he really doesn't like California. Oh, has he uh, just joined you? Oh, no. No, we all came out together. We just moved in day before yesterday. I guess we didn't see you moving in because, well, that's the day we all went to the beach. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Douglas, this is a real comedy of errors. Well, how do you mean? Well, we've been sitting around sort of waiting for you old-time Californians to welcome us. To, to welcome you? You see, we only moved in the day before you did. We're from Michigan. No. Yeah. Well. <laughs> hey, Dad, look what I found at school. We owe her some eggs. Oh? Katie, this is my dad, Dad Katie Miller. Hello, Katie. How do you do? She's my locker neighbor. We don't really owe her any eggs. She was actually born here. Really? Well, uh, Rob and Katie, this is Mrs. Deering, our neighbor. Hi. Oh. Hello there. Hi. Uh, Katie. As the only genuine uh, Californian we've met so far, uh, what would you say is the best way for two neighbor families to get to know each other better? You're not a true transplanted Californian till you have broken bread and burned meat together at a barbecue. <laughs> at a barbecue. We'll... Are the hamburgers supposed to be in fire like that, Mr. O'Casey? Yeah, Gordon, you and Ernie run in the house and get me some wax paper. Hey, Gordon. He doesn't want any wax paper. He just wants us to get out of here. And how come we're going for the wax paper? Because he doesn't like it if kids like us figure out why he says things. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, the, the hamburgers are on fire. Yeah. You two do me a favor. Go on in the house and find me some wax paper, will you? <laughs> hey, Uncle Charlie. Go in the house and find me some wax paper. <laughs> 
Boy, those hamburgers smell good, Uncle Charlie. Aren't you going to say how they're on fire? Well, you're just searing in the juices, aren't you? Right. I'd like mine a little on the rare side, if you don't mind, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I forgot what we're looking for. Wax paper. Wax paper? <laughs> Your Uncle Charlie sent us all in here to get rid of us. I guess so. Come on, you guys. We might as well get out there and get our hamburgers. Boy, Uncle Charlie really gets... Your Uncle Charlie what? Forget about Uncle Charlie. Here they are. They look just wonderful. Get the buns, make them up in your plate, get ready for that. Yeah, yeah. may I help with the coffee? Oh, that'd be just great. Thank you. You're going to have to move that over. Say, Dad, may I speak to a minute? Yeah, sure. Dad, uh, you went with a lot of girls in your time, right? Well, it wasn't exactly an army, Rob, but uh, I went with a few girls, yeah. Yeah. Well, how did you know when the time came to... Uh, I mean, what made you propose to our mother? Well, you know, it's a funny thing. I kept seeing her in an apron and in a house. And somehow I just knew it was our house. An apron, huh? Are you sure it wasn't a wedding dress? No, no. no it was one of those half aprons, you know, and it had a big red rose for a pocket. <laughs> Take a look at Katie now, and just tell me what you see. Oh, I see a very pretty girl helping with the coffee. Yeah, I, I guess you would. Why? What do you see? Oh, um, nothing. You know, Dad, uh, I'm beginning to understand what they see in California. <laughs> Couldn't say a thing like that right out loud. Well, Dad's home. Uncle Charlie and Robbie and Ernie are somewhere around here. Somebody might hear me. No, I'm not ashamed of us. No, I haven't changed since this afternoon at school. I still. Well, you know. Oh, don't cry, Violet. Okay, I'll whisper. I love you. <laughs> Ernie, you're spying on me. Yeah, it was a mistake. I'm nauseous. I told you I didn't want to say it, Violet, and you made me. My little brother Ernie was right here. You heard every word. Of course we're going steady. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Why, kissing over the phone. Boy, honey, I never thought you'd turn out to be a rotten kid. The things I go through with older brothers. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for listening to my private conversation. Oh, Violet, of course we're going steady. Okay, okay. What do you take to keep quiet? Chip, I'm a student, not a blackmailer. I won't tell anyone except Howard Schwartz. <laughs> Who's Howard Schwartz? A kid at school. He has two older sisters. We're writing a book. A book? You might as well tell the whole world. No, we'll respect your right of privacy. We say, Chip D is in love with Violet M. Who would know? Well, it's a good thing you're writing about Chip D and not Robbie D. I'm tolerant. He'd murder you. He's in it, too. He's in the chapter called The Age When Guys Get Serious About Girls. Well, he's not only getting serious, he's getting married. <laughs> Have you told anybody yet? Just my mother. Mm. It all happened so fast, I haven't even told my sorority sister. <laughs> that calls for a kiss. Charlie, do vacuum my end farm. You do your work, I'll do mine. What'd your mother say? She tried to say all the right things. You know how mothers are. 
It's one thing I don't know. They're very protective. Mm. I'm afraid she was shocked. Naturally. She'll be losing you. Okay. Chip! Ernie! Who threw a handful of tacks under the rug? Oh, nobody threw them, Uncle Charlie. They fell. Under the rug? Well, maybe the rug wasn't there when they fell. Then somebody put the rug on top of them. That's the dumbest thing you've said since the last dumb thing you said. Ernie, go get my toolbox. Chip, you go back and do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> How sharp was she? Mama? Mm -hmm. She wrote instantly. She said all the usual things. Who is the boy? How well do you know him? Are you sure? Huh. All the rest of it. You can hardly blame her. Mm, I don't blame her at all. When's she coming out for the wedding? The week before. I guess it's next week. Huh. Well, Robbie, darling, I hope you like her. How can I help it? She started you. Here's two. Now what? Send the boy to do a man's job and they fall flat on their face. Don't just stand there. Pick up that junk. I hope you guys know you put the vacuum cleaner on the bum with those tacks. Shut it up, Tramp. You playing Uncle Charlie? Well, he don't have to play right in my ear. It's time to teach him tricks, show him how to pick up tools. <laughs> Well, I think we got all the tools and nails and junk. Yeah, well, I'll be able to tell you next time I go up these stairs barefoot. Okay, you guys. Back and do the dishes. And you too, Tramp. Go on. Come on, Tramp. I suppose I really ought to get home. <clears throat> I guess. Oh, hi. Hi, Dad. I was just taking Katie home. You have to eat up your own dinner. Why? There's nobody home. Oh. Hi, Steve. I finally got it fixed. <laughs> we finished the dishes, Uncle Charlie. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Tell me what she's doing. Well, she's kissing somebody. Well, who is she kissing? Oh, I can't see him. Oh, here she comes. Who was he, Katie? Who? The boy you were just kissing now, in the convertible. His name is Robbie Douglas. Robbie. Robbie Douglas. Did you ever hear such a name? Well, I may have. Well, what about him? I mean, how long have you known him? Nineteen days. Good night. You've known him 19 days and you haven't told us about him? I mean, after all, we're your best friends. Well, I know. I wanted to keep them all to myself. Good night. Oh, by the way, Robbie and I are getting married in two weeks. Good night. Katie getting married? Sensible, level-headed Katie? This is the girl that dropped the captain of the football team because he tried to kiss her on the third date. It's probably what they call an applied psychology. Going a. <laughs> I think this bears a little looking into. Oh, don't be silly, Gracie. That's butting in where we're not wanted, as well as snooping. Right. I start tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, Rob, your car's parked in the driveway. No, you're not getting my car to practice on. Hey, Rob, when you were getting your driver's license, you drove Dad's car up down the driveway about 50 times a day. I did, didn't I? Yeah, you did. <sighs> okay. Here. We'll stay on the driveway and don't go on the street, all right? Okay. Thanks. All right. <laughs> in butting in, but this is one time I think we better do a little checking. Yeah. Well, we're supposed to study English vocabulary on page 22. 
Words like monsoon, junk like that. Monsoon? I think it's French for mister. <laughs> There's someone at the door. I'll call you back. Uh, I'm doing a survey on the social habits of men for a school project. Uh, can I come in? Oh, sure. I have a seat. Thank you. What attractive home you have. Yeah, it's okay. Well, can I have uh, your name? Well, I'm not a man yet. I'm still in grammar school. <laughs> well, do you uh, have any brothers? Yeah, uh, Chet. He's not allowed to drive out of the driveway. So I guess he's not a man yet either. <laughs> Any uh, other brothers? Yeah, Robbie. He's in college. He kisses girls and everything. Robbie will do. Well, he's still at school. Well, uh, perhaps you could answer some questions for him. Does he date much? Yeah, he has about 50 girls. Oh? Well, not here. He left them all in Bryan Park because we had to come out here. Has he um, ever been serious about... Any one girl? Oh, sure. Well, good. Who is she? Are you supposed to put down personal junk like that? Oh, well, uh, this report will never be published or anything. Okay. Anyways, this girl he was going to marry was called Dorothy Welsh. Dorothy Welsh? <laughs> yeah. Only well, couldn't marry her because he was going steady with Ruth Gorsh and Emily Meadows. <laughs> he was going steady with two other girls? Yeah. He went steady with everybody in sight. He had a chart on the wall where he sort of kept track of oh, I think I have enough. <laughs> well, don't you want to hear about the riot? The riot? Yeah. He got mixed up and took Dorothy to the mall shop where Luke Gorsh and Emily What's-Her-Name happened to be. My dad didn't come by for tobacco. He'd have killed him. Good. <laughs> Thank you for the information. Well, that's where I'll be right now. You, you bluebeard. <laughs> What's that all about? I don't know. She was taking a survey, and all I did was tell her about the girls she used to know in junior high. <laughs> I'm not 15, Gracie. You got the brothers mixed up. Anyway, that's a relief. Well, I'm not so sure. He's cute, but, well, he's not for Katie. Do you know he went study with three different girls at the same time? What's wrong with that? <laughs> well, most people don't, Pat. Anyway, I just hate to think of Katie getting stuck with a bofario like that. She won't. What does that mean? You gonna think of something? I've already thought of it. Here you are. Oh, thank you. I'm such a clumsy person. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, you think so? I mean, we hardly know each other. We don't know each other at all. Well, how quick of you to notice that. But a little thing like not knowing each other can quickly be rectified. Don't you think? You're going to think I'm the square of all time, but uh, I'm engaged to be married. Bye. And it's hard to keep my mind on the economics of social structure when the man I'm going to marry in less than two weeks is sitting right beside me. That calls for a kiss. How do you do? Won't you come in? Oh, um, I'm looking for... Well, don't mind them. That goes on day and night around here. <laughs> well, I'm looking for... Please! Mama! Oh. Um, Mama, I want you to meet somebody. This is Robbie. I certainly hope so. <laughs> Listen, kids neck a little when they're going to get married. Didn't you ever... Uncle Charlie. Uh, nice to meet you, Ms. Miller. Uh, please sit down. What am I, chop liver around here? <laughs> I'm his Uncle Charlie. Here. Uh, Plant it. <laughs> Not that we're not glad to see you or anything, Mama, but, well, we weren't expecting you until next week. Were we, dear? Uh, no, no, we will be a tea. What? Well, now that we're going to be relations, I thought I'd run up a little refreshments. Now, uh, coffee or tea? Uh, whatever's easiest. <laughs> I'll surprise you. <sighs> hey, uh, were you ever in Hong Kong? I, uh, no. 
Funny, there was a dancer in the Sampan Saloon down by the waterfront that was a dead ringer. Oh, Uncle Charlie. I think you better get the refreshments. <laughs> Mama, why did you come out before you said you would? One of your sorority sisters sent me a letter. Charlie! Charlie, this shirt I found on my bed, you don't expect me to wear that to the meeting tonight, do you? All the buttons are off. That's a dust cloth I left in there. And stop making such a racket. We got company. Uh, oh, excuse me. I'll, I'll be right back. Three guesses what I'm making. One of my sorority sisters sent you a letter? Yes. She said you were marrying a 15-year-old. Go up her path, sir. Okay. <laughs> Now what? Grant, close your big hairy mouth. Ernie, take that silly thing off your head. We got company. I'm sorry, I... What happened? He fell on his head again. <laughs> Grant, shut up! I'm Steve Douglas. Mr. Douglas, this is my mother. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? Uh, quiet. There goes that fat-headed kettle. Ernie, answer the phone. Grant, shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Welcome to the family. <laughs> So, you know, somebody's been exchanging my wooden hangers for wire ones. Have you any idea who? Well, not me. Uh -huh. uh, can I ask you something? Sure. Well, I was just talking to Katie, and, uh, well, her mother's arranged this little get-together for me. Uh -huh. With whom? Well, it seems that Katie has two cousins, an aunt and a grandmother living out here over in Glendale. Uh -huh. Well, it's uh, inspection time, Rob. Inspection time? Every uh, prospective groom has to go through it. They have to pass on you. Who? Oh, that gang in Glendale? Why should they? Well, it's part of the game the ladies like to play. They, uh... They have to look you over, check on your uh, opinions, your clothes, the way you comb your hair, and all the rest. Oh, brother. And after they've done all that, they decide that, well, you're really not good enough for their Katie, but uh, maybe given enough time, they'll come to see what Katie sees in you. <laughs> Did you have to go through this? Oh, sure. Your great aunt Sophie uh, always thought of me as that brainless boy who was all legs. <laughs> There's no way out, huh? Well, I'm afraid not, Ron. Why don't you just think of it as a vaccination? One shot and you're immune for a while. Thanks, <laughs> Dad. Any time. You know, Dad, we've had many a talk in our time, and every time I leave her, I always feel a lot better. But not tonight. Leave <laughs> it alone. It's all right. That hurts. Oh, well, where is he? Well, he'll be here, Mother. We said 8 o'clock. Well, 8 o'clock is too late. We thought it would be better than 7 o'clock because of your nap, dear. Don't dare me, Alice. Grandma, Alice went to her glory five years ago. That's Annie. What difference does it make? They both look the same. Well, what's going, honey? Not going to be that bad. It's going to be quite an evening. That's what I'm afraid of. Oh, Robbie, come on. Hello, darling. Oh, Robbie, it's so nice of you to come. The family's been looking forward to meeting you. Go on. This is my cousin Grace, uh, Robbie Douglas Grace. Robbie sounds like a little boy's name, dear. Is your real name Robert? Yes, ma'am. And for heaven's sake, why don't you call yourself Robert? I can say. And this is my cousin Eldon Sorto, Robbie Douglas Eldon. Welcome to the family, boy. And may I say it's a relief to see somebody under six feet? Us shrimps have got to stick together. <laughs> and this is uh, uh, Kathleen's Aunt Annie. Hello, Robert. Uh, it would have been nice if you and Kathleen had come over to meet the family before we sent for you. Aren't you going to kiss your aunt, dear? This is uh, my cousin. Bring him here. Well, I was just introducing him to Kathleen. I said bring him here. Mother, this is Robbie. I know who it is. Do you think I'm deaf? <laughs> so, you're going to marry Katie. Yes, ma'am. You're too thin. Oh, no, ma'am. I'm about the right weight for my height. You talking back to me? Well, I, I was just... Uh, no, no, ma'am. It's just that, uh, well, I don't think I'm too thin. Well, don't stand there looking at me. Dance with a girl. Play something so I can see the cut of his leg when he dances. <laughs> well, you, uh, you heard what the lady said. May I have this waltz? Grandma, 
What? What? Oh, it's you, Katie. And your young Robbie. <laughs> uh, Katie, go away. I want to talk to him alone. Come closer, boy. Don't think I want the whole room to hear this. This is between just you and me, Robbie. <laughs> I like you. Thank you. Thank me for what? Because you look at my granddaughter with eyes of love? Because you're a strong man and we need a strong man in the family? Thank me for what? For liking me. Because uh, I like you. You do? Yes, ma'am. Well, I yell a lot. And I'm cantankerous. And you still like me? I see a lot of Katie in you. And as far as the yelling is concerned, you ought to meet my Uncle Charlie. Oh, your Uncle Charlie yells a lot too, does he? <laughs> he has to. His name's O'Casey. Oh. Turn off that music! Katie, come here! Kathleen Miller, if you so much as give this boy one speck of trouble, I'll march you to the woodshed personally. Do you understand me? Yes, Grandma. And that goes for the rest of you. Good night. Oh, Robbie Douglas, I want great-grandchildren, do you hear me? Hundreds of them. <laughs> And then Katie's mother took me around in the circle and I had to meet all of them, one at a time. Why, that crook. And then what? Uh, then every one of them had something to say. Like, one of them said I was a shrimp. <laughs> uh, her cousin wanted to know why I didn't call myself Robert instead of Robbie, you know, stuff like that. Oh, yeah, the thing like that happened to me once in Ceylon. But when I found out that every member in the family had to hit me with a welcome club, <laughs> I bowed out fast. Was everybody looking at you? Yeah, it was rugged there for a while. Well, I remember I had to stand up and say a poem once in front of the whole class. And everyone was staring at me, and I wished I knew how to faint. Was it like that? Yeah, something like that. Dad says every guy goes through it. Every guy? That's what he says. Man. Dad, is going steady something like being engaged to get married? Well, Chip, I suppose in a way. Hello, Violet. Oh, this is your friend, Chip. Yeah, hold on a minute. Dad, you won't let me go steady with anybody, will you? You mean now? Yeah. Well, I say at this point you're a little young. <laughs> My dad says I can't go steady. So all those goofy plans we were talking about were a waste of breath. Yeah, well, maybe we can wave to each other once in a while. Yeah, maybe we can dance.